Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about a few of the non-fiction books that I've been reading recently. Um, before, I feel like I just never really read that much non-fiction. Before university, I didn't really have the attention span for it. During university, I wasn't reading much, and when I was, I didn't really want more information in my brain. But now I've really been enjoying it, and I think that's in part because of how good I think these books are. Um, each of the three books that I'm going to talk about today I think are incredible. I would wholeheartedly recommend, and the, I just absolutely love. Um, so yeah, on that note, um, the first book that I want to talk about is Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster by Svetlana Alexeyevich. So if you don't know what the Chernobyl explosion is, a brief summary of the event is that one of the reactors at the Chernobyl power plant exploded in 1986. And this was an area that is in northern Ukraine, and since it exploded, there was a large fire, and the a huge, unprecedented amount of radiation was released. This, this went on to become one of the greatest radioactive disasters in all of history. Not talks about so this book essentially chronicles the voices of the people affected by the disaster. At one point, one woman says that in her life there was a before Chernobyl and there's an after Chernobyl. And this book is the chronicling of the after Chernobyl for thousands of people, for hundreds of people, for all these different perspectives of people who were affected in all these various ways. Um, one thing that I felt like the book did really in an interesting way was it highlighted the ineptitude of the Soviet Union in how it dealt with the disaster. Um, one example is how, for instance, right after the fire occurred at the reactor, firefighters were sent in absolutely no protection. Everyone who was sent in died because it was an incredible amount of radioactive exposure. They died in very painful ways. Another example is that after the disaster, the rates of thyroid cancer went up quite drastically in the surrounding population. And this is because your thyroid absorbs some of the ions that were released by the explosion, and so these ions affect your thyroid and cause cancer. And so what the Soviet Union could have done was it could have handed out iodine pills, because if you take iodine pills, your thyroid will become saturated with that iodine, which will not cause cancer, and it will be much less likely to absorb a lot of the, the iodine that would cause cancer. Cause cancer. Um, so they didn't do this, because they felt that if they did this, then the people would panic, they didn't want that, and so they did not um, instate any procedure to hand out iodine pills to the general population. Despite the fact that people who are higher up in government or doctors, people who knew what was happening, often did take those iodine pills. And so these are just two examples of how the bureaucracy and just the apathy of the Soviet government made what was already a very terrible disaster much worse. And so this is an absolutely harrowing book. Like, I, I normally have a good stomach for this sort of thing, but I had to stop reading a few times. I cried. It was... it's quite painful. The first account in this book is a story of a woman whose husband was part of the team that was initially sent in to put out the fire. She describes how he dies of radiation poisoning in great, excruciating, horrible detail. And it's just because that that's what those people went through, and it was absolutely terrible. I think that the power of this book is in just the, the wide span of all of these perspectives, because you go from hearing about a scientist who was advocating for the government to institute a program where they handed out iodine pills to seeing the perspective of a peasant woman who doesn't understand what radiation is. When, when she was asked to evacuate the area, she didn't understand why, because, you know, the plants looked good, the area looked good, everything was fine, and she didn't understand what was happening, and so she chose to stay. And it's just such a powerful, powerful book, probably one of the most powerful things I've read this year, maybe ever. Um, so like I mentioned before, it is painful, it is graphic at points, because these people are just telling their stories, and their stories are graphic. Um, but if you feel like it's something you can stomach, if it's something that you feel like you're interested in, I would recommend you pick it up. It's very interesting, it's very readable, it's not difficult, um, and it is genuinely one of the most fascinating things I've read in a long time. On a less harrowing note, the other book I want to talk about is The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business by Charles Duhigg. So this book is about habits, you know, what they are, why they exist, how they work, how you can change them, how changing them affects your life. and so the book is broken up into three parts, where it talks about how habits work on an individual level, and it talks about how they can work on a corporate level, and how they can work on a larger social scale. The way in which the author talks about these things is through a lot of extended anecdotes. So for instance, one of the examples about how habits can affect you on an individual level, he talks about um, one man who essentially had lost the ability to create new memories, and so was operating largely on habits. He, he, for business example, he talks about Target's marketing strategy, he talks about Alcoa, an aluminum company, and how it essentially rebuilt itself and reshaped its productivity through instituting these basic habits within its company. Um, it also talks about, you know, community support behind Rosa Parks. And it's very fascinating. Like, he'll always ground what he's saying in a tangible example. 
which I really enjoyed and I feel like made the story stick a lot better. So even if I forget, you know, specific paragraphs where you talk in great detail about what a habit is, I'm going to remember an extended analogy about like Alcoa, the aluminum company. And I feel like that really makes what he has to say stick and become a lot more powerful. I came away from this book with a much more conscious understanding of how much your unconscious mind determines your everyday behavior. Um, it's not a, it's not that it's a self-help book. I don't think I've ever actually read a self-help book, but it, he doesn't necessarily write the book with the intent of, you know, telling you to go out and change all of your habits, but just in being aware of the fact that you have habits and they influence how you think and sort of just becoming conscious of that, it does sort of change the way you live your life. So I really feel like in the few weeks since I read this book, I very, it has honestly made changeable results in my life, just in the sense that I'm now more aware of the things that I do, so I sort of catch myself, you know, how do I get up in the morning, how do I do these things every day, because it really sort of helps you to re-examine all of these basic behaviors that make up most of your day, and that you don't necessarily question, because it just happens by now. I really, really recommend this book, I think it's a great non-fiction book, it's very engaging, it's very interesting, it's well written, it's simple to comprehend and it has concrete practical effects in how you live your life. I do think it's a very very good book, a very enlightening read and I would highly recommend it. The last book I want to talk about is Letters to a Young Muslim by Omar Sayyid Kobash. And so the author is the current ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to France. He was previously the ambassador from the Emirates to Russia for a very long time. So this is a book of letters addressed to his son, um, set kind of along the style of Between the World and Me by Tan Hesse Coates. Um, which is also a book of letters written from the perspective of a father talking to his son. Um, the other case, that of a black man talking to his son growing up in America. But in this case, what I found really interesting about this book was just the perspective, which was so different from what I know in my everyday life, because this is a Muslim man writing from a Muslim community to his son who was growing up in the same environment. And this is really interesting because as someone who lives in a secular state in North America, I I associate religion with something that is personal. So in my mind, religion is a part of people's personal lives, but I very rarely associate it with political and social circumstances. Again, it's always personal, it's always something you do behind doors, or maybe you sometimes talk about, but it's not around me on a political scale, it's not an institutional force in my life. And so whenever he talked about how much Islam was wrapped up in the political life and just the way in which she talked about Islam, because to him it wasn't just a religion, it, was, it wasn't it was a religion in my sense of the word, which is something that you just believe on your own time. It's a religion in something in the sense that it's something that everyone around you believes, something that your government believes, something that is it just intrinsically a part of your life, and so I just found that absolutely fascinating. He talks about a lot of things. One of the things he touches on that I found most interesting was discussing how Islam being wrapped up in political life frustrates a lot of Muslim youth, so he's addressing this to his son, essentially he's talking and so he's talking about frustrations that he assumes his son will some experience and about how in the area in which he lives a lot of things are going wrong politically and the obvious answer to those problems to people growing up in the society is a religious one so if things are going wrong politically for a lot of muslim youth the answer is things are going wrong because you're not practicing your religion, religion correctly things are going wrong because islam itself isn't sound once you fix that that everything will become well. And so he talks about how that might sometimes lead into or lead to a kind of form of extremism or fundamentalism because it's just an outlet for frustration that you feel and it is the best answer for a lot of people. And so some of these things might be obvious to people who are Muslim or just thought about these things better than I have, but the book was just so steeped in this perspective, which to me was so different than what I know to be around me in my everyday life, that I found it absolutely fascinating. That was probably my favorite part of the book. Um, a lot of other things that he talks about are just basic parts of being a human. You know, this is the father writing to his son, so he's kind of spilling out all the wisdom that he thinks he has, and so there's a lot of parts that might just be a little bit annoying for some people, where he's just talking about what he thinks it takes to be a good person, or just a very basic interpretations of Islam that he wants his son to sort of have and hold on to throughout his life. I felt I liked those parts. Sometimes I like someone just tell, spilling some wisdom, just telling me what they believe about something. I enjoy that. Um, and I was okay with the parts where it felt a little bit more simple. Um, but I can see how some, for some people it might be a little bit more dry. I do think that either way, I would definitely recommend this book. I think it's a really interesting thing to sort of, even if you don't read all of it, I would read a few, few of the letters. I would maybe skim through it a bit just because I think it's so fascinating and it really opens up your mind to a very different perspective. And so I'm really interested to read things from that perspective more in the future. But yeah, so those are the books that I want to talk about. 
Um, like I said, I recommend every single one of them. I think that each of these authors set out to do something that was very difficult and did a great job. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you're planning on reading any of them, and I'll talk to you again later. Thanks for watching.